Hello. Today I thought I'd just show you how to make a fun little block called shoe fly block. And I've made it using two and a half inch squares. I quite like two and a half inch squares. Or possibly you could use five inch squares for some of the bits, but it didn't work so well on this one. Um, you may have two and a half inch strips and things that you're using up. So this is a shoe fly block and it's, it's just got these half square triangles in the corners. And quite often you probably would see it with the same background in the corners, but I've chosen to put a different colour in the background um, on this block. But the making of it is just the same. So you need to have four of these, um, in my case, white squares, which would be two and a half inches square, and then five of this um, soft bluey grey colour. And then you need another four two and a half inch squares of this corner if you're going to put it together like I have. Otherwise they would be in the same as the white. So starting off with, we're going to make a half square triangle corners here. So for that I've got my little soft grey fabric. Now this has got a bit of a one way design on it, this fabric. So you may want to keep an idea, an eye on that because you may, you may not mind, but you may not want them to, to change direction, in which case we'll just have to keep an eye on how we do those. And for the, for the corners we're going to make put two squares together but we're going to mark on the back of one of them some lines and I've actually already done mine but I'll show you how I've done it. So on the back of a square I'm just going to to draw a line, I'm just using a mechanical pencil, draw a line from corner to corner on the diagonal using my ruler. So I just place that on so that the drawn line sits right on the diagonal and then just using a marking that's half an inch in on my ruler and it doesn't really matter which way round most rulers have marks every quarter of an inch or half inch or so and I'm just going to lay the half inch mark right over that line that I've just drawn on that, that diagonal and then I'm going to draw a second line so that it's a half an inch away from the first line. Um, so we end up with this square with a diagonal and then a shorter one half an inch away. So I've already drawn it on my other one. Now because I was a little concerned about keeping my stripe or one way design on my fabric going the same way, I need to have a look at how I'm going to position my diagonals. So I'm actually going to do them so that they sit opposite. So I've got my bigger triangle here and I want my bigger triangle here so that that would be going that way and that way so that when I flip those open to make the half square triangle blocks, they're both going in the same direction, this, this pattern on the soft grey fabric, because I didn't really want them to be going all over the place. Yeah. So now I'm going to take that to the sewing machine. We're going to sew on both these lines, um, the longer one first, and then come back and sew on the second line. And that's just so that we can make use of that triangle that we're going to be cutting away. So I'm going to sew right on that longer line first, right on top of the line. And then I can take the next one and feed that one in as well. So as long as you've put them together right to get your one direction fabric right, you can turn them around as long as that line's there in the right place in the first place. So now I'm going to come back and sew that second line. Now this second line is really just so we can use this triangle that we're going to be cutting away. I don't really need it for this block. However, I've been making a lot of blocks like this and I'm getting quite a big collection. So now I'm going to cut those apart. So I'm going to lay, lay my ruler so that a quarter inch marking sits right over my sewing line. I'm actually wanting to cut halfway between the two sewing lines. And as it's half an inch gap, if I lay my quarter inch line on top and cut, then I've got that. Now we actually don't need this smaller piece, because when that opens up, that's our half square triangle for a corner of our block. And this piece here is a smaller version, but we don't need it this time. I just thought it made it usable rather than... Not usable. And I'm just going to cut this second one. Again, we don't need those. Save them for later. Leftovers. Aren't leftovers just delicious? So now I'm going to do my pressing here. 
and I'm going to press that into the darker colour. And this one. And trust that we've got our things around the right way. And we put it in the, in the block and yes, I'm very happy to say my little line on my fabric is going up and down. Now I've already done one piece for the top part of the block. These can be the bottom part of the block and I've joined together for the middle of the block. Just It was just three squares. Again, I'm just using my quarter inch seam allowance. So I've just joined those together already because I'm quite sure you know how to join three squares together. So that's going to be the block and this last little row here has another little square in it. So we'll just join that up so that you can see the block finished. Now you can have a lot of fun with different fabrics and things. I'll show you a sample in a minute of a small quilt that I've made using this block. Just get this block together. I love these little blocks. Um, they're a traditional block that has been used over the years and there's just something so appealing about them. But even in today's uh, fabrics and things, they can still look great. Now I'll press that into the colour, so I'll just press this one into the colour here. So now my seams should be alternating. I've got them going out on that row, I've got them going in on that row, and I've got them going out on that row. And that's so that when we join these little rows up, uh, we, we can nestle the seams quite nicely. So now I'm going to join those together. So these little seams here, one should be going one way and one the other. And then you can just feel it. If you bring that in, it'll just nestle in together nicely. All those seams again. And there's our block. I'll just give that a quick press. So quite soft colours and my my corners are looking a little dark, a little bit stronger, so you're probably wondering what on earth I was thinking. But I'll show you what I was thinking. So I've actually alternated it with another block and I found this delicious fabric which has got a diagonal stripe on it and I thought, oh my goodness, how hard is that to use? But I thought in this nice traditional block I'd give it a go. So in this quilt that I've made, I've used that diagonal stripe as my alternating block. So it's exactly the same block. It's got the same color corners on it. This is this block here. But I've used a navy blue instead of my light gray. And I've used this navy and white, oops, whichever way it goes, diagonal um, stripe for my square in between where I've used just the plain white in this block. And I just think that's really exciting. I'm really thrilled with the way that's come out. So it's just nine blocks that I've made on this quilt. Um, the piecing is exactly the same, but four of them are the light block like I've just shown you, and five of them are just this one with the navy blue and the, the diagonal striped fabric. And I just think that's come up really nicely. It's uh, different, I guess. Um, it certainly doesn't have that traditional look about it, uh, but it just seems to work. And then I've just done the binding with that diagonal stripe as well. So that was the shoe fly block. It measures six and a half inches. It'll be a six inch finished block when it's sewn in. So enjoy the shoe fly. <laughs>